What's happening everyone this is Vijay signing in for the in-depth review of new Panasonic Eluga S. Hope you enjoyed that little intro which was 100% made out of new Panasonic Eluga S. But for the camera part we'll talk about later. Let's start with the design first. One of the best part of the design is the back panel which is made out of a rubbery leathery material which does gives a very premium look to the device and kind of reminds me of the Note 4 but the quality of the back panel is very premium and does feel a lot better in hands. At the left side of the device there is a power lock and unlock button with a sim card tray. At the bottom of the device there is USB socket with a pinhole microphone beside it and on the right side we have a micro SD card tray and volume rockers below it. At the top there is nothing but a 3.5mm headphone jack and that's it. For the front panel we have a Panasonic branding on the top and close to it we do have a dual colored LED notification light. The device also have a 5 megapixel super awesome selfie shooter but <laughs> that's we're gonna talk about later. And at the bottom of the device we have 3 capacitive touch buttons which are menu, home and back keys. Panasonic Eluga S got a 5 inch 720p display and despite being having a, a bit low resolution the device performs really well. The colors on the display looks more natural in indoor conditions but they do fall out when we are outdoor and the brightness is on maximum level. But it's not a big deal and it will not bother you at all. The viewing angles on the device are pretty great. As you can see on the screen, no matter where I tilt it, the colors don't fall out. And this is one of the stuff that you will not find in any device in this price range. Under the hood, the Panasonic Eluga S got a MediaTek MT6592 chipset which is clocked at 1.36 GHz and have true octa-core technology. And I must say Panasonic did a great job by lowering the clock speed of the CPU because the 1.6 and 2 GHz version of this CPU have some heating issues. And that's why props to Panasonic for doing that. The device is running the latest version of Android as you can see on the screen the 4.2.2 and I guess it will get the uh, future updates and I'm not but I'm not sure for that. And it has 1 GB of RAM and 8 GB of internal storage. The battery on the device is pretty cool but we'll talk about that at the end of the video. There are only 3 sensors on the device which are accelerator proximity and light sensor. So let's do some benchmark test and let's see how far this device can go. So first of all in the list is the geek bench. So I'll skip the video on the benchmark and see you on the results. So on the Geekbench we got a good score of 2043. Now let's try out N22. Even on the N22 the device scored a pretty repetitive number of 28082 and as long as I know this is above average and the device performed pretty well. Now let's move on to some gaming test and let's see how far the GPU can go. So here we are testing two of my favorite games first one is FIFA 15 and the second one is Clash of Clans. Both the games does require a good GPU to perform well and let's see how FIFA 15 works. There was a minor frame drop at the beginning but it is a game issue and not at all a big deal. Now let me do a quick match show you how the GPU works. The game does take a fair level time to load up but anyway here we are in the game and let's see if I can hit a goal. So as you can see on the screen the game is running pretty well and there is no frame drop at all uh, let's see if I can do a goal over here oh oops no no oh yeah <laughs> I think that is a pretty impressive goal and let's take a look at it once again <laughs> now let's move on to clash of plane so here we are in the Clash of Clans and the game do have some high quality texture and tons and tons of details and as I said I do require a good quality GPU to handle those textures. As you can see on the screen the colors look pretty sweet and I think that gives a pretty good idea of how 
good this device performs in gaming segment. So here we are finally talking about the camera. The device has a 8 megapixel autofocus camera at the back and a single LED flash beside it. The camera quality is great and I must say the details in the videos are above average. Here is a sample video that I capture in daylight and as you can see the autofocus just works very well even while moving. The colors looks more natural and the pictures and video that are captured in the device don't lose their natural color while most of the devices in this segment fail to do so. Even though the sensor is a bit smaller than most of the devices in this segment but guys one thing I want to tell you that in the quality of the pictures and videos megapixel doesn't really matter in most of the time. You can get a 40 megapixel camera but there are cameras with 8 or 12 megapixel which performs better than it. Overall the device has performed really well in low light conditions and daylight conditions. No matter where I take it the device have captured a great quality images and, and I must say that it is pretty impressive. Talking about the front facing camera we have a 5 megapixel shooter which works exactly the same like the primary one. It does take great picture in low light and even daylight. Here are some sample pictures that I took in daylight. So here is an image that I capture in full sunlight and as you can see the colors are pretty impressive and it did take a very good selfie. Even in low light conditions the device have performed really well and here is an example. This picture was taken from a shed where I don't have any good lighting but still the device have performed really well. We also do have a Panasonic Blink Play app which takes selfie in a better way. It works this way. You just have to pull out your phone, open up the Blink Play app, raise your phone over your face and blink once. That's it. You got your selfie. It is a very effective way to take selfies and the app does work really well. So that's it for the camera. Let's move on to the battery segment. The Aluga has got a 2100mAh battery which is not that great but uh, not that bad too. It is very decent and I must say it didn't got me through whole day. But if you have a moderate usage like just texting, social networking and calling then it can last up to 12 hours. Believe me or not, it do. But if you are kind of me like who loves to play games and social networking and browsing and that kind of stuff then you will end up charging your device through once in a while on an average day. Panasonic also added a special kind of feature to the device like double tap to sleep. It's work in a way just you have to double tap on your home screen on an empty space and the device will go to sleep. It does come in handy if you are lazy type of guy like me. With the device itself you will be getting a USB 2.0, data syncing and charging cable, a charger, a SIM ejecting pin, an in-ear headphones and a flip cover. They also added a screen guard which I have already pasted on the device and I bet you haven't noticed the screen guard on the device during whole video. So here is a quick overview of the flip cover attached to the device. The upper side is made up of a good quality leathery material but the back side does feel slippery glossy plastic but what I think is free stuff is always great. So hopefully the video ends up here and before signing out let's take one last look to pros and cons of the device. So the first up has to be the design of the new Eluga S. The back which is made out of a leatherit material it is pretty great. It does feel a lot better in hands than the plasticky material that all the phone carry today and it does give pretty premium look to the device. Second up in the list has to be the Blink Play app. It is a very innovative way to take selfies and I do prefer blinking eyes rather than touching the phone. 5 megapixel front facing camera is one of the pros for the device. It does take quite well pictures in low light and in daylight. Last but not the least has to be the double tap to sleep feature. I have already experienced this kind of features in rooted apps but uh, it was my first time to get to play with it on a non-rooted device. The only issue I came over with the device is the battery. It is pretty decent for moderate users but guys like me who play games a lot it can be an issue. So hopefully I wrapped up all the things. If you have any queries let me know in the comment section down below and if you enjoy this video leave a like down below. Spending few seconds really helps me out and if you haven't already subscribed to my youtube channel subscribe it now so you will not gonna miss any of my future videos. So this is Vijay signing out and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.